All right. Um, prepare a schedule of cost of goods and manufactured and sold. So here's where we get into this lovely chart. All right. So in the beginning, you have your raw materials. That's what you buy. With your raw materials in your balance sheet, you're then going to have your cost of materials available to use. So you bought them. What is that cost? Okay. And we'll go through an example of this. Um, when we do that, we, so actually let's just do the example with it. So let's say you purchase, um, 37, $37,950 worth of, um, raw materials. Okay. At the end, your raw materials are $950. That means you've used 37,000, um, materials. So. What we do is we move that 37,000 into this work in process category. Okay. And then you add in the labor and the overhead to get your total manufacturing costs. In my example that we'll look at on the next page, you've got labor of 36,600 and overhead costs of 26,700. And if you want to follow along, this is on page 380. Um, when you get your total manufacturing costs, you add up those three, which would be 98,300. Okay. Um, for this example, we are starting with zero in raw materials, zero here, zero there. Oh, no, wait, we have 2,000 finished goods. Excuse me. Okay. That's what we're starting with. But so a work in process, that's when you are actually um, creating this product. And some of you are kind of thinking, well, why, why would you need that? You know, you make a table, it's made in a day. You're not going to move, you know, $37,000 worth of table products into a work in process and then finished goods. If you can make those all in, you know, one day. Um, but you have to think about other types of products, products that could take days, weeks, months, or even years to finish. Um, think about wine, um, beer. They all have to sit um, for weeks or months and wine sometimes years um, before it can be considered a finished good. So wineries have so much work in process because of the fact that they're waiting for that wine to age appropriately. So here we have got our total manufacturing costs and then the ending work inventory, we'd have 3,700. So that's saying if we had total manufacturing costs, the only thing that's left at work in process at the end of the time period is $3,700. The rest of it, we moved into finished goods. So it's one of these fully put together puzzle. Um, so that means that we then moved over $94,600 because you're finding the difference between the two. Uh, we had 2000 at the beginning of the time period. We have $94,000 worth, $600 worth that we have added. So we get a total finished goods of 96. So costs available for um, sale, which is not here, we would have 96,600. And then our ending inventory, we've still got $3,200 in ending inventory. So to find our cost of goods sold, we're going to take that 96.6 and subtract the 32 to get 93.4, okay? So we had $2,000 worth of finished toys. We added 94,000. We had 32 left at the end of the time. That means we sold that 93.4. And here's what it looks like in a schedule of costs of good manufactured and sold. Start with how much you had in raw materials, which was zero. We're just kind of going to work our way across the board. We have our raw materials purchased. Subtract your um, ending raw materials and you get your raw materials used. You have your labor, your overhead. The total manufacturing cost is when you add up those three. This company didn't have anything in process at the beginning. So our total work in process is just our manufacturing costs. We subtract what's left in process at the end of the time period to get what total cost or what the total um, finished goods are. 
and that was 94.6. We had 2,000 to begin with, so our cost of goods available for sale, so that would be our total finished inventory, is 96,600. We have 3,200 left, so that means our cost of goods sold is 93,400. Along with the schedule for of cost of goods manufactured and sold, you then can look at a partial income statement. And all this is doing is taking your sales revenue and subtracting this cost of goods sold. So your revenue minus your expenses to give you your gross margin. And that's uh, the second half of, or the second part of the notes for chapter 10.